Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So this is the 2024 election battleground map. We got 43 days to go and barring some unforeseen upset, which could happen, but it's not likely to happen. These will be the seven states that could realistically go either way. And we have new polls that dropped out of the New York Times, the election mafia, uh, the mainstream media, they will trash pollsters that have been more accurate in presidential years, but they'll cling to these polls from like the New York Times and all these other pollsters. They'll call them high quality, you name it. But are they really? Well, usually they underestimate Donald Trump. They underestimate Republicans, but mainly Donald Trump. And what those polls are showing out of several key battlegrounds, they're showing that Donald Trump is the favorite. And we're going to analyze some of these polls and what they really mean. And we're going to dive into this. But first, I have to tell you guys really quickly about shop.redeaglepolitics.com because we're right around the corner from Election Day. And why not get some 2024 election merchandise? We have new merchandise, new designs on the shop. We brought it back. We have the Donald Trump mugshot design. We have the Make America Gain Again design. We have the Make Cats Safe Again design. And my favorite design is the Trump Iconic design. I love this mug. If you guys have seen my videos before, you know I've talked about it. I swear by it. It's great quality. You have Donald Trump with the American flag bullet design on the front and the inspirational quote on the back. And for a limited time, you guys can buy one, get one 20% off, all t-shirts, tank tops, and coffee mugs. I'd encourage you guys to at least go check the site out. The link will be in the description and the pinned comment down below. So, this election map. This will be the map that determines the winner. Whoever gets to 270 electoral votes is going to be the next president of the United States. And that is widely known at this point. And when you look at the polls we saw today out of the New York Times, Donald Trump is in a prime position for victory. He's hitting 49% in three out of the four battlegrounds in the Sun Belt states, which is absolutely huge. Because if you get 49%, 49 point something, you're probably going to win the state because we're probably going to have, you know, 2% go third party, maybe a little bit less, but still either way, if Donald Trump is hitting 50 in Arizona, that is big news for Donald Trump. Of course, the election's not over, but compared to their last poll, their last poll had Donald Trump down five in Arizona. Now he leads by five in Arizona. Georgia, the poll is unchanged. North Carolina, Trump was down two. He has taken the lead in North Carolina. A lot of Democrats are very bullish on North Carolina for reasons I can't exactly describe. And while it might be, you know, competitive, Donald Trump is probably favored. And if you put all these three states on the electoral map, you give him North Carolina, which is a state he should hold. Georgia, he's up by four. Now, it really depends on black turnout for the margin in Georgia. And it is true from the early vote data that we have, the request data, out of both states, it does seem like we're headed for an electorate that might even be whiter than 2022. And that's not set in stone. But what we do know is that there is a chance that you might see an electorate that is going to be more favorable to the Republicans. Because Kamala Harris is not generating that energy among black voters the way the media claims she is. And if you give Donald Trump Arizona, he's at 262. There are four states remaining. If he wins Nevada, which I think if he's really up in Arizona by, you know, two or three, I think you could even see Nevada. Uh, I wouldn't say vote to the right of Arizona just yet. But if we're going to be real, it's getting there given certain trends. Maybe 2028 it could. You could even see like a blue Arizona and a red Nevada depending on the election. But, you know, Nevada, could I see Nevada going Republican? Absolutely. But still, it's not enough. Now, if Nebraska goes winner take all, that would be enough for Donald Trump. Uh, it doesn't seem as if we have any confirmation on that. It's, it's not likely to happen because Republicans in Nebraska, they don't have a spine. I've talked about this before. It should be done. Maine, it's too late for Maine to change. Nebraska can go ahead and change it, give Donald Trump an electoral vote, open up another pathway to victory for him. They're not doing it for whatever reason. But in terms of the Rust Belt states that Donald Trump does realistically need one of them, whether he gets Nevada or not, he's going to need one of them. Look at the polling average in these states. Michigan, Harris leads by less than two. Pennsylvania, 
She leads by less than one, and her campaign is not confident at all in the state of Pennsylvania. So if Donald Trump goes out there and gets Pennsylvania, that is ball game over. He doesn't even need Arizona at that point. Or if he gets Arizona, he could get Nevada. Georgia could go Democrat, and it wouldn't matter. He would still win at that point. So Pennsylvania is crucial. But the New York Times poll in Pennsylvania, they've always missed that Trump voter, that low propensity voter, that white working class voter who, you know, is disaffected, doesn't vote in midterm years. That's why the polls and some of these polls, they call high quality because they only look at 2022. They don't look at the big picture. They don't understand the Trump phenomenon. And when you look at Pennsylvania, they have the national vote tied between Trump and Harris. Pennsylvania is not voting to the left of the country by four points. It's not. It's not voting to the left of the country at all. I'd be very, very surprised if it did. But what we do know is that the national polling has been more accurate historically um, than some of these state polls. And the national polls are more in line with what we're seeing in Arizona, where Trump leads by five, Georgia, where he leads by four, North Carolina, where he leads by two. He probably, if he wins Georgia by four, I think he wins North Carolina by more than two, but I digress. And Virginia being close, and you're seeing the supercharged early vote turnout, I'm not saying Trump's going to win Virginia, but it could be a hell of a lot closer. I encourage people to get out and vote in Virginia. Um, but regardless, what we're seeing is a surge for Donald Trump there in the polling. And, you know, a lot of these polls in, in some of these other swing states lately, they're starting to match up. But you look at the polls in Arizona, he leads by two in Arizona. And there hasn't been a poll that Harris has led in like a month in the state of Arizona. And that was like right after the DNC. And you look at the past uh, polling errors at this point in history, Biden led by four. Uh, he, it was like a dead heat at the end of the day. So that's like an overestimation of three to four points. And, and the same thing for the 2016 poll and the polling error we saw at this point in Arizona. And Trump is somebody that does usually peak late. And he's hitting the campaign trail hard this week, which is good for him. But you look at Arizona, you look at Georgia, where the polls historically haven't been that inaccurate. Out of the state of Georgia, Trump leads by two percentage points. And again, when is the last poll that Harris has even led? It's been like a month. And in that same poll, Trump has gained four points since the last poll. So you're seeing that there out of Georgia. She's in trouble. She's in trouble in Georgia. Trump will be there this week. I believe he'll be there tomorrow or, or, or one of these uh, days. Uh, that are going to be coming up this week. But you look at Georgia, North Carolina is another example. He leads the polls there. Uh, he leads the polls pretty much everywhere. But Wisconsin, you compare the polling errors, he's only down one in Wisconsin. And Kamala Harris, you know, that's not a lead she wants to have uh, in terms of the magnitude because you see so many Harris plus ones out of Wisconsin. What were the polls showing in 2020 at this point? Biden by seven. Hillary by, you know, six in the final aggregate. So the fact is, is that Donald Trump already out of the state of Wisconsin, he's neck and neck. That's great news for Donald Trump. And the Democrats don't buy the polls in Wisconsin. We've seen reports about that. Michigan is another example where, you know, she doesn't have a comfortable lead. She might win Michigan, but it's not going to be uh, by the margin that the polls are probably showing if she does. And there's a really good chance that Donald Trump could come in and have an upset victory in Michigan, uh, just as he did in 2016. But Pennsylvania as, as well, you see the fact that Harris only leads by what, 0.7 percentage points. And she's led a few polls here and there. But a lot of these polls have been historically inaccurate in presidential years in Pennsylvania. So we'll see what happens. We'll see how it shakes out. But she's not the favorite. She is not the favorite. And if you look at some of this other data, that we're seeing here. The rise in consumer prices in these battlegrounds, it's worse there than it is nationwide, especially in Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona. It's a big problem. Nevada, it's a huge problem, especially for a you know working class heavy state like Nevada. The economy's hitting these areas hard and Harris is going to go out there and tout this like great economy. Oh, Bidenomics is working. Those ads that Trump is running, they're very effective. They absolutely are, and it shows. And I do believe that in the coming weeks, or at least this coming week, you're going to see more polls that are in line with the New York Times polls because the response bias is going to wear off from the debate, 
and you're going to see more and more polls released from these swing states that are going to show a competitive race. And they still are probably going to, you know, miss some Trump voters in, in the Rust Belt. But the fact that he's looking so good in the Sun Belt, because if you look at Georgia and Arizona, you could even say maybe the polls are overestimating Trump. I don't think he's going to win Arizona by five. I don't think he even takes Georgia by four. But still, they're not going to overestimate Trump, most likely by like four to five points in those places. North Carolina, they may be underestimating him because there's more of the electorate there that's white working class. And that's the demographic that pollsters typically miss. And they're very low propensity. And we have to chase ballots and get these people out to vote. But I will say that Donald Trump is in a good position. And these polls from the New York Times just confirms that even more. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.